winter has officially arrived. And what happens, God forbid, if you or someone you know is injured on the snow and the ice on someone else's property, or maybe you've got friends coming to your place and they slip and fall? Well, the Michigan Supreme Court issued an important decision earlier this year in the area of something they call premises liability. Premises liability. Here to break that down for us, Tom Sinus from Sinus Jameis Law Firm. Hi, Tom. Hey, Todd. How are you? I'm well. I got to be honest, never heard of premises liability. I'm assuming this is what we're on the hook for if something like that happens on our property. Yeah, it's it's a funny legal phrase. A lot of times people will use the shorthand term slip and fall, but that's kind of too narrow because there are a lot of things that fall within the realm of what we call premises liability. And so a simple way of describing that is what type of situations does a landowner become liable to someone who is hurt on their property. Uh, It's not the rule that if someone is hurt, then automatically the landowner is liable. We have here in this area of law, like we have in other areas of law, we have rules here, very peculiar rules and kind of complicated rules, a set of rules for determining under what circumstances a landowner can be liable for injuries on their property. That's the basic idea of what premises liability is. Okay. Well, I feel like I should be rushing out to get some rock salt uh, for my sidewalks and driveways. Uh, What is Michigan's premises liability rule of law and how does it differ from other states? Okay. So here's the basic legal concepts. In order to uh, be successful in one of these cases, you have to show that the defendant, so most commonly the landowner, owed the, the plaintiff, the injured person, what we call a duty of care. And generally speaking, our courts recognize that a landowner owes a duty of care to exercise reasonable care to prevent, pr- protect invitees, meaning people we invite onto the property, to protect invitees from dangerous conditions on the land. Now, that part is very consistent with other states around the country, but here's where things are quite different in Michigan. In Michigan, we have a special rule that says there is no duty to protect from those dangerous conditions when those dangerous conditions are what the courts call open and obvious, or the legal description would be, or the more full legal description would be, where the dangers are known to the person coming or are so obvious that they would know of them. So we call this doctrine the open and obvious doctrine, which is unique to Michigan, maybe a few other states. It's in the minority, what we call of jurisdictions. And it creates a situation where someone can be injured on another person's property. And if that, the the way that the person was injured was so open and obvious to a judge interpreting the case, then the landowner has no liability at all. And the case is thrown out of court. And the area of law of premises liability has been substantially affected by this open and obvious doctrine over the last few decades. And, And here in the Supreme Court case that we'll talk about, we have a little bit of some more information about some exceptions to the open and obvious rule. Uh, Terms like open and obvious and reasonable care, pretty subjective terms. I'm sure that the fine print of what that exactly means is debated in court with these cases. Tell us about this Michigan State Supreme Court ruling. Well, what's interesting about your comment is that the open and obvious rule isn't subjective. It actually is applied objectively. So, you know, typically if someone is injured on someone else's property, they didn't see the thing that injured them. So it wasn't open or obvious to them. But the courts apply an objective test, which just means, well, should it have been open and obvious to a casual observer? So it really becomes an objective test where you have judges deciding whether that particular thing is open and obvious. But in this case, we have in operation these two limited exceptions to the open and obvious rule. Really, this case deals with one exception. Over time, the courts have recognized two exceptions in general. One is what are called unreasonably dangerous conditions, and the others are called those which are effectively unavoidable. And that's what this case deals with, meaning that if the hazard that injured the person was effectively unavoidable, then the open and obvious rule should not apply. And we revert back to that that general standard of reasonable care. So what happened here? Well, this was a case involving a a woman who like all of us went to work in the morning. She parked her car in the parking lot. It was in the middle of the winter. The parking lot as as the case reflects was covered in ice and snow covered. 
she gets out of her car, she slips, she injures herself. It's one of those situations where it's so icy that she actually has to crawl her way to the door of her employer in order to get to work. And the defendants in this case took the position that all of the ice and snow that she encountered was open and obvious because there are a number of cases about ice and snow being open and obvious. The issue here, though, became, well, wait a minute. Was this effectively unavoidable? Could she avoid this? She had to go to work. And the defense side of the case said, well, she didn't have to go to work. Her choice would have been not to go to work at all. And so the question really becomes, is that really going to be something that we're going to call effectively unavoidable? Is it avoidable to just say, I'm not going to go to work? Or are we going to acknowledge the reality that people have to go to work to earn a paycheck, to meet their responsibilities? And if they encounter a situation like this, is that one of those effectively unavoidable situations? And the Michigan Supreme Court in this decision said, yes, that can be one of those effectively unavoidable situations. It can be one of those exceptions to this open and obvious rule, this very limiting rule. It can be a situation where the injured employee can pursue a claim against the landowner. In other words, the court said, we're not going to have a, a rule that says that the choice should be just don't go to work. So it's a narrow exception, but it's important because it recognizes an exception to a relatively harsh rule. But it also, I think, recognizes something important, which is the practical realities of people's day to day lives. I think all business owners right now are making sure that their parking lots, right, at least mentally, are going over that checklist. Like, make sure that that's salted. Uh, you want to care for your employees. Obviously, many different layers with this premises liability law. If this has happened to someone or maybe it's happened to you, if you're watching this right now, or you know of someone, where can they get more information and get their questions answered? Well, they can find us online at www.sinusdramus.com. They can shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com or give us a call 616-301-3333. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the info. Thanks, Todd.